Masjid al Nabawi, right? In the city of Medina al Munawwar. At the time of the <coughs> Prophet, how was the masjid? The masjid, to be honest, was not much bigger than yours. In fact, it's probably the exact same size as your masjid here. So imagine that this is Masjid al Nabawi at the time of the Prophet. Right? In this direction, the direction you're facing. The brothers, where do they pray? In the front. They start making their rows from the front. Right? Where do the sisters make their rows? Not from where this middle section starts, like the wall, and they start making their rows from the front. Islamically, the women are supposed to make their rows beginning from the back. Beginning from the back. So let's just say, to make it easy to understand, the Imam is standing there and he's praying, just like we normally do, just like we just did. And the brothers start here and they make their rows. And hypothetically, let's just say that there's no wall in between us. And so sisters come in and they want to pray. Do they see the brothers standing here and so they start to make their row here? No, they don't. They start to make their row there, in the back, the furthest away from the brothers. Do they go and carry a partition and bring a partition and divide them? No, they don't. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us through the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that your segregation is the fact that the men are in the front and the women are in the back. That is your segregation. When brothers walk through, let's just say the sisters are praying in the middle and brothers come through the door and they see the sisters and the sisters might be in ruku' or in sujood. That's a fitna for some brothers. That's a mushkila. That's a problem. They see this, they're like, oh, astaghfirullah, I need to go make wudu again. Right? This is a problem. But if the sisters make their rows from the back, there's hikmah in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has descended upon us. This is my point. My point is the deen has hikmah in it that we don't understand. And when we start to implement our own ways, then we start to complicate things. Now, I'm not saying don't use a partition. Don't get me wrong. And not saying do not put a partition between you. If you want to, great. Alhamdulillah. But it should not be something that is made a condition Islamically because it isn't. Let's use another example. I can show you pictures right now if we had internet connection. We can go online right now and pull up pictures of a masjid in Indonesia. In the capital, the biggest masjid. Where the imam is standing there in the front. And right behind the imam is actually the row going out the masjid. There's no one standing there. To his right are the sisters. To his left are the brothers. And there's thousands of them standing in the masjid praying. Thousands. Now, mentally, when we try to use our logic and apply it to the deen in ways that go against what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, we create confusion. Why do we create confusion? Because now rows in that masjid, for example, meet. Brothers and sisters meet. And so they turn that into a walkway. So people want to come and go, they can come and go in the middle. Why would you need to come and go in the middle while salah is taking place? Right? It's because we've confused ourselves. We've complicated our deen in ways that the Prophet ﷺ did not complicate. His masjid at his time, وسلم, had no partition, no physical barrier. When the companions عنهم, finished their salah, they would sit down in their adhkar and the sisters, the, the female companions would leave. When they were gone, the male companions would get up and leave. Was there any issue? There was no issue. When they went into the markets, were the markets or the marketplace, was it restricted to men? Were there signs that said men only? No, there wasn't. It was open to both men and women. We know that Khadija anha, was one of the most uh, one of the most blessed, we could say, businesswomen. That she excelled in business. Now, yes, people are gonna argue, okay, this was before Islam. But 
even after Islam did the Prophet ﷺ forbid women from doing the business? No, he didn't. Right? And so we see that there's different types of gender interaction within our deen.